Let's adjust this a little bit. Oh, not so much. Okay. That was fun. So I wanted to talk about, give you a little bit more in-depth treatment of uh, some of the things that Jaron Lanier talked about on Friday. And I'm not sure how many of these I'm going to do, um, but I thought I'd start with something that he mentioned toward the end, because it's one of my favorite subjects. I mean, it's all good stuff that he talked about, um, but it's uh, starting the subject of topology. And uh, he was talking about a very particular surface, but let's start with a rectangle. And I want to talk about different kinds of shapes you can make just from a rectangle and glue or tape. Um, and some of them are surprisingly complicated. So if you take a rectangle, the first thing you can do is you can glue just two edges together. And I'm indicating arrows to say that the top of this one glues to the top of this one, but bottom of this one glues to the bottom of this one, so that they're not twisted. Now, you can picture for yourself what that gives. It gives a cylinder. And if you remember where the gluing was, it makes a little seam. But the great thing is that you want to imagine that you really have done the gluing perfectly, and you wouldn't notice. And one of the perspectives you want for this kind of thing is, in addition to looking at it from the exterior, from the perspective of this is sitting inside a three-dimensional space, and then you move it within three-dimensional space, and there's another surface in three-dimensional space, you want to look at it from what's the, the flatlander's perspective. I think you mentioned flatland. The idea that you're an ant maybe crawling on this surface, and that's your entire world. If you're crawling on this surface, you notice that there's four edges and four corners. You notice that those points were special, and you notice that those were near the limits of your world you could not go off. If somebody does the gluing, suddenly your world has changed. The ant discovers, now there's still an edge up here, and there's still an edge down here, and if I get to it, I can feel that it's an edge. There's no corners anymore. And that edge that is labeled A doesn't exist anymore. I can go around and around and around, and I never notice anything. But I do what I do notice is that I can go in the same direction, in a straight line, and get back to where I started. That's very different. That's not something that ant could do here. So there's definitely a lot of different properties of a cylinder from a, a rectangle, and a lot of those different properties you can get by, from the ant's point of view. It's called the intrinsic point of view versus if you think you have to look at it from the outside, put it inside of something and look at it from the outside, it's called the extrinsic point of view. So for example, extrinsically we could say this thing looks like it's curved inside a three-dimensional space. From the end's point of view, it's not really clear if he would actually even think there's anything curving about it. He just walks and walks and walks. He gets half to get back where he starts. That's weird. But he might not notice anything curving or bulging or anything like that. And that's, that's an actually a different discussion, but um, it turns out that to the end it really isn't curved. So that's one thing, cylinder. So let's put a list up here of uh, things. Uh, oh, let's, let me set my watch here. Okay, so a cylinder is one thing you can make. Um, now, what else can we make? Well, famously, we could already get get pretty interesting by just flipping that guy. And we make a Mubius strip. Now, those are a little hard to draw. And so here's a Mubius strip, that, that the one I made for uh, Jaron Lanier on Friday, that it's a surface, pretty well-known thing, that it has just one side to it. And so that's, that's something the ant's really gonna, gonna notice, is that as opposed to the cylinder, there seemed to be, well, there could be an ant on the outside and the ant on the inside, and they would never be able to meet each other. Maybe they could radio each other, but they'd never touch each other. But here, if there's an ant on this side, an ant on this side, the ant here can walk around and meet the ant on the inside. There's only one side. And in fact, there's also only one edge to this thing. So if you follow around an edge, it actually traces out the entire edge. That's good to do if you actually do it you know, yourself. Hopefully you've done it at some point. Let's see how we could get that just out of this picture. Well, let's say we start um, start right here at the top of this edge. We could walk along here. It's like, okay, we're going to get half the edge, but ah, wait a minute. This guy is glued back to this point. And then I 
keep walking. Ah, that's how I get the other, what seemed to be this other edge. They are, in fact, glued together. And then when I get to here, that's at the head of this arrow, matches to the head of this arrow, and I'm back where I started. So there really is only one edge to the thing. So this is the Mibius strip. Mibius did a lot of good mathematics, not just his strip, but it's a good thing to be named, for, named after you. So that's what we can do if we just leave this edge alone, these two edges alone. Don't glue them. If we just glue these guys, there's only two options, twist or not twist. Um, well, basically. There's some other things you could say, but from the intrinsic point of view, it's actually, that's actually all there is to do. So let's go back to not twisting, because that was simpler. And see what happens if we glue these two guys without a twist. Okay, so um, just for practice, let's try the intrinsic point of view and the, and the point of view where we actually don't try to draw a picture. Um, right away. We're going to try the intrinsic point of view, and uh, let's see if I'm an ant crawling like right here at that corner. Well, first of all, is that really a corner? We already saw that an edge, something that used to be an edge, could disappear as a seam, and sort of, then, then sort of smooth out and become seamless. Is this really a corner? Well, I can go in this direction, perfectly legally, obviously, but I claim I can also go in this direction. Because if I go in this direction, well, this edge is glued to this edge, so I just actually come out from here. This corner is really identified with this guy. I can go, I claim I can go in this direction as well, because this corner is really identified with um, this corner, because the bees are glued together. They're both the, 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 the tail of this arrow. And so it's really just going this direction. And I can even go in this direction, because I just think of this corner as being up here. All these four corners, all these four points are the same point. And I can actually go in any direction. Similarly here, I can go up or down, because I can just, I just reappear up here. I can go, here I can go to the left or the right and then reappear over here. There's no edge. I've glued the edges together, there's no seams left. And so that suggests I'm going to get this very nice thing, a surface with no edges at all, what's called a closed surface. But what is the surface that we get? Well, let's just exaggerate a little bit. Since this is topology, it doesn't matter if I stretch things a little bit. I'm only worried right now about the basic shape and the, the, the connectivity, how things glue and cut and things like that. I'm not worried about distortions of length or angle or anything like that. So I'm going to stretch it out a little bit, okay? And I'm going to glue B first. And there's where, the, where B would have been, the seam in the front, but it's really all nicely glued. And then I'm going to pull it around and glue the ends together. And what I get is a torus, a donut in other words. And so here's where that gluing happens. I stretch it around and I glue it together. Now you can't do this with paper because paper isn't rubber. Paper doesn't, isn't a topological material. It's a geometric material. It actually cares when you distort it. And you crinkle like heck if you try to do this with paper. But um, you can do it with fabric, for example. Okay. So especially if it's, if it's stretchy, like lycra or something. So what you get is a donut or bagel or a torus. I'll add, add that to our list. And this has some really nice properties. You can go around it and get back to yourself in this direction. But you can also go around and get back to yourself in a completely different direction, qualitatively different. And you can even do a mix of them. You can go around, and as you're going around, you can kind of go into the hole and then back out. It's a little hard to draw. And then you reappear here. And oh, it's all dotted. And you get back to where you're, where you're, you're going. Or you can go around three times this way, and as you're doing it, go wrap around five times around the, so the in-out direction. And you get all kinds of cool things called torus knots. It's actually something that's ended up being, being a knotted, knotted with itself in three-dimensional space. So here's an extrinsic picture. But you can get a surprising amount out of the intrinsic picture. Just say, this is my world. The rules are, I glue this to this, I glue this to this. The classic video game Asteroids is played on exactly on a torus with this picture of the torus. They don't actually show you this picture, the extrinsic picture. They show you a screen. But when your ship goes off here, it appears here. Similarly for the asteroids that you're trying to get avoid, avoid being hit by. So that's another thing. Well, let's see. We didn't, um, we didn't do any twisting. What if we do some twisting? Well, 
Let's see. Let's um, let's leave b untwisted. So we can do this step, and it's the same. So we make a cylinder. Okay, that was that first thing that we made, a cylinder. Now let's see what happens if we switch the a's. So how would we do that? How would we do this gluing so that they come together in the right way? When they were both sort of up in front, I twist them around, I pull this around, and the up in fronts matched up, and it was glued the right way to just to make a torus. But now it's up in front and down in front. So that if I if I twist them, if I pull them together, if I'm about to do this to make to try to make a torus, then this guy's going to be up in front and down in back. This guy's going to be down in front and up in back. And I'm not supposed to just put them together. So what it turns out I have to do is I have to pass this guy through here and kind of turn it inside out. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thing, maybe make it a little bigger, wrap it around, and duck in from the back side to make these guys match up. That's pretty funky, okay? And it's unfortunate that to make the extrinsic picture of this shape, I have to pass the surface through itself. This is just not something that's possible, even using rubber and stretching, even with the, rule of the fairly loose rules of topology, it's not something possible to embed in three-dimensional space. I have to ha violate some of the nice rules that I'd like for a nice picture. I'm not violating any mathematical rules that's inviolable. Uh, surfaces can pass through each other all the time, mathematically. But it's not going to be something that looks as pretty as the torus. Okay. So this guy kind of comes back around in here. And let me do a little handheld camera work here. Cinema Verite, because I actually made this already. Here's what you get. It's not the world's best picture. It's called a Klein bottle. Klein bottle. And what we have is here's that tube that's kind of that's the tube that we were going to try to make the torus out of. And it comes around, and then what happens is it goes inside itself right here. It actually actually has to pass through a hole in itself. And this hole shouldn't really be here. It has you have to make it if you're going to actually make this out of a physical object in three-dimensional space. And uh, Don Smith on Friday brought in an example of that. Um, we made made out of glass, but ideally you'd like to be able to do this in a way where you don't have to pass it through itself. Well, you can do that in four dimensions. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, so, but if you do pass it through itself, then you just connect it up at the bottom. So let's one of the things very much like the movie a strip here is that there's no inside to a Klein bottle. For example, this looks like it's the inside of this tube, but if you go to here and you you pour something in this li some liquid in here, it's going to spill out the bottom. Okay, this is an opening. You can see the, uh, the, the stuff just spills out this hole at the bottom. And uh, so there's no inside to the Klein bottle. We can kind of look at that more carefully if we look at these cross-sectional circles I've drawn. Um, these cross-sectional circles, if you look at this sort of the inside direction, I'm going to draw a little arrow pointing inside on all those circles. Well, wait a minute. Uh-oh. Suddenly, oh no, that's changed to outside as I move it smoothly across the surface. We can see that on the, um, the intrinsic picture that uh, if the, the, the bees, again, are glued together to make the tube, and so like a circle here, those cross-sectional circles down here are really just coming from straight lines here. Okay, so if I have... Um, one of these cross-sectional circles, then suppose I have a circle like this, and I line it up, I put a little arrow on it, lined up with A, and then if I just try not to move that, uh-oh, uh-oh, it's not lined up with A at all anymore. There's, a, there's that flip, which means that any kind of thing I do with a circle at one end is going to end up, at one end of this tube, is going to end up incompatible at the other end. Okay. That's a good place to stop this one, and I have to anyway.